our topic today is about the female reproductive system. First slide is a section in the ovary. Each ovary consists of the cortex. This is the cortex and the medulla. The cortex, a region with a stroma of highly cellular connective tissue and many ovarian follicles. The cortex, a region with a stroma of highly cellular connective tissue and many ovarian follicles. The most internal part of the ovary, the medulla, contains loose connective tissue and the blood vessels. Loose connective tissue and the blood vessels. This is the medulla. Each ovary is covered by a single layer of simple cuboidal epithelium called the surface or germinal epithelium. The surface or germinal epithelium overlying a dense connective tissue capsule called the tunica albogenia. Surface or germinal epithelium dense connective tissue capsule called the tunica albogenia. The follicles that are formed during fetal life, the primordial follicles. The primordial follicles. The primordial follicle consists of a primary oocyte enveloped by a single layer of flattened follicular cells. This is a primordial follicle. Consists of a primary oocyte enveloped by a single layer of flattened follicular cells. The oocyte in the primordial follicle is spherical with large nucleus containing chromosomes in the first meiotic prophase. This is the oocyte and this is the nucleus of the oocyte with the chromosomes in the first meiotic prophase. This is a primordial follicle. Follicular cells undergo mitosis and form simple cuboidal epithelium around the growing oocyte. The follicle is now called a unilaminar primary follicle. This is a unilaminar primary follicle consists of an oocyte surrounded by a single layer of simple cuboidal epithelium. These are the follicular cells. Unilaminar primary follicle. The follicular cells continue to proliferate forming a stratified follicular epithelium, the granulose in which the cells communicate through the gap junctions. The follicular cells continue to proliferate forming a stratified follicular epithelium, the granulose. Follicular cells are now called the granulose cells. And the follicle is a multilaminar primary follicle. This is multilaminar primary follicle. This is the oocyte and these are the granulose cells. Between the oocyte and the first layer of granulose cells of the growing fo primary follicle, extracellular material accumulates as the zona pellucida. This is the zona pellucida. 
containing four glycoproteins secreted by the oocyte between the oocyte and the first layer of granulosa cells. Extracellular material accumulates as the zona pellucida. This is zona pellucida containing four glycoproteins secreted by the oocyte. This follicle is a multilaminar primary follicle. Oocyte, this is the nucleus of oocyte, zona pellucida, granulosa cells forming stratified epithelium, and this is the stroma surrounding the multilaminar primary follicle. The stroma cells outside each growing primary follicle differentiate to form the theca folliculi or follicular theca. The stroma cells outside the primary follicle differentiate to form the follicular theca or theca folliculi which differentiates as two distinct tissue around the follicle, theca interna and theca externa. The theca interna, a well vascularized endocrine tissue, which typical steroid producing cells secreting androstenodione. Theca interna. A well vascularized endocrine tissue with typical steroid producing cells secreting endurostenodione. A more fibrous thick externa with fibroblasts and the smooth muscles merges with the surrounding stroma. Thick interna, thick externa. Both form the theca folliculi or follicular theca. This is multilaminar primary follicle, oocyte with nucleus, zona pellucida, granulosa cells, theca interna and theca externa. As the primary follicle grows, they move deeper in the ovarian cortex. Within each follicle, a small spaces appear between the granulosa layers. As the cells secrete follicular fluid, this fluid accumulates the spaces enlarge and gradually coalesce to form the antrum. This is a crescent shaped antrum. And the follicle now called secondary or enteral follicle. This is secondary or enteral follicle. The spaces between the granulosa cell layers enlarge and coalesce to form the crescent shape enterum and the follicle is now called the secondary or enteral Follicle. This is the oocyte, zona pellucida, granulosa cells, antrum, theca interna, and theca externa. This is mature or graphene follicle with single large antrum. The granulosa cells around the oocyte form a small hyloc, the cumulus oophorus, which protrude into the antrum. This is the cumulus oophorus, granulosa cells protrude into the antrum. The granulosa cells that surrounding the oocytes form the corona radiata. This is mature or graphene follicle with single large antrum.
this is the oocyte surrounded by a layer of granulose cells that will form the corona radiata. Granulose cells that bulge into the interim form the cumulus oophorus. Second slice section in the ovary, we can see the corbus albicans. This is corbus albicans. This is another corbus albicans. If fertilization doesn't occur, corbus luteum degenerates. forming a scar tissue called the corbus albicans. If fertilization doesn't occur, the corbus luteum degenerates and are phagocytosed by macrophages and fibroblasts form a scar tissue. This is the corbus albicans. This is another one. This is another section in the ovary. Shows the corbus albicans, a scar tissue. Connective tissue consists of collagen fibers. Corbus albicans. Third slide section in the ovary for the corbus luteum. After ovulation, the granulose cells and theca interna of the ovulated follicle reorganize re themselves to form a larger temporary endocrine gland, the corbus luteum. After ovulation, granulose cells and theca interna cells reorganize themselves to form large endocrine structure called the corpus luteum. Cells of both granulose and theca interna change histologically and functionally. Granulose cells increase greatly in size without dividing and comprise about 80% of the corbus luteum. They are now called the granulose lutein cells. Granulose lutein cells. The former theca interna form the rest of the corbus luteum as theca lutein cells. These cells are half the size of the granulose lutein cells and are typically aggregated in the folds of the wall of the corbus luteum. Aggregates in the folds of the wall of the corbus luteum. Thicke lutein cells. Granulose lutein cells and thicke lutein cells. Found or aggregate in the folds of the wall of the corbus luteum. Granulose lutein cells, thicke lutein cells. These are granulose cells that increase greatly in size, comprise 80% of the corpus luteum, thicker lutein cells. They are small in size and aggregate in the folds of the wall of the corpus luteum. Granulose lutein cells, thicker lutein cells. Fourth slide is the section in the oviduct or uterine tube. This is a cross section in the oviduct. We can see the oviduct is supported by ligament and mesenteries. This is the mesosalvinx. The wall of the oviduct consists of folded mucosa 
a thick, well-defined muscularis with circular and uh, longitudinal layers of smooth muscle. Fold the mucosa, a thick muscularis layer of inner circular and longitudinal layers of smooth muscle fibers and a thin serosa covered by visceral peritoneum with mesothelia. Fold the mucosa, thick muscularis layer of circular and uh, longitudinal layers and serosa covered by visceral peritoneum with mesothelium. This is folded mucosa. And the epithelium is simple columnar epithelium. This is simple columnar epithelium with two types of cells. And this is lamina propria of loose connective tissue. This is a mucosa. Simple columnar epithelium, lamina propria of loose connective tissue. The simple columnar epithelium consists of two types of cells. Ciliated cells and non-ciliated secretory cells. That often darker and with an apical bulge into the lumen. These cells, secretory big cells, secrete glycoproteins of a nutritive mucus that covers the epithelium. Simple columnar epithelium with ciliated cells and non ciliated secretory cells that secrete glycoprotein of a nutritive mucus covering the epithelium. This is lamina propria muscularis of circular and longitudinal layers of smooth muscle fibers and serosa. Epithelium, two types of cells, ciliated and non-ciliated, secretory big cells, lamina propria of loose connective tissue, and muscularis, and then serosa. Fifth slide section in the uterus. The uterine, uterine wall has three major layers. An outer connective tissue layer, the perimeterium, a thick layer of highly vascularized smooth muscle, the myometerium, this is myometerium, and a mucosa, the endometerium, lined by simple columnar epithelium. The uterine wall has the three layers a perimeterium first layer and uh, is not seen in this section second layer the myometerium which is the thickest layer consists of smooth muscle fibers the endometerium a mucosa lined by simple columnar epithelium This is endometrium. Myometrium, the thickest layer of the uterus, shows bundles of smooth muscle fibers separated by connective tissue containing venous plexuses and lymphatics. This is myometrium. Endometrium. Lamina propria, this is lamina propria or citroma of the endometrium, contains collagen type 3 fibers with abundant fibroblast and the ground substance. This is lamina propria of the endometrium. Its simple columnar epithelium has both ciliated and secretory cells. 
secretory cells also line the numerous tubular uterine glands these are tubular uterine glands tubular uterine glands the endometrium has three zones the basal layer adjacent to the myometrium this is the basal layer of the endometrium adjacent to the myometrium has a more highly cellular lamina propria and contains the deep basal ends of the uterine glands this is basal layer and the superficial functional layer has a spongier lamina propria richer in ground substance and includes most of the length of the uterine glands this is endometrium basal layer and functional layer myometrium endometrium the endometrium has two layers basal layer and functional layer this is epithelium simple columnar epithelium with two types of cells ciliated and secretory cells these are citrate or tubular uterine glands lined by secretory cells this is basal layer of the endometrium this is functional layer of the endometrium this phase is the proliferative phase also called follicular or estrogenic phase proliferative also called estrogenic or follicular phase during the proliferative phase the endometrial lining is simple columnar surface epithelium and the uterine glands are relatively straight we can see the uterine glands appear as a straight tubules straight tubules with narrow nearly empty lumens this is a proliferative phase this is endometrium simple columnar epithelium uterine glands appear as a straight tubules with narrow empty lumens uterine glands appear as a straight tubules with narrow empty lumen this is simple columnar epithelium with two types of cells ciliated and secretory cells this is the functional layer of the endometrium with uterine glands this is the basal layer of the endometrium these are the end parts of the uterine gland basal layer is located adjacent to the myometrium second phase is the secretory phase after ovulation the secretory or luteal phase starts as a result of a progesterone secreted by the corpus luteum progesterone stimulates epithelial cells of the uterine glands and these cells begin to secrete and accumulate glycogen dilating the glandular lumens and causing the glands to coil we can see the uterine glands appear coiled or tortuous as a result of a progesterone secretion from the corpus luteum the secretory cells proliferate and accumulate glycogen so we can see the glands appear coiled or tortuous and the lumen is filled with secretion
this is secretory face this is endometrium of the uterus we can see the uterine glands appear tortuous with wider lumen this is endometrium of the uterus during secretory phase tortuous uterine glands with wider lumen this is slide section in the cervix the cervix is a small this is section in the cervix is the small cylindrical part of the uterus the cervix differs histologically from the rest of the uterus we can see the endocervix or endocervical mucosa is a simple columnar epithelium on a thick lamina propria with many large a branched mucus secreting cervical glands simple columnar epithelium lamina propria with large a branched mucus secreting cervical glands this is endocervical mucosa endocervical mucosa this a project a projection is called blica palmati consisting of simple columnar epithelium with lamina propria Blica palmati. This is endocervical mucosa, simple columnar epithelium, thick lamina propria with large branch mucus secreting cervical glands. This region is the external or exocervical mucosa. Exocervical mucosa. found around the external os project slightly into the upper vagina we can see the epithelium is stratified sequimous epithelium non keratinized this is endocervical mucosa and this is exocervical mucosa with stratified sequimous epithelium non keratinized this area a project slightly into the upper vagina This is a plica palmati, simple columnar epithelium, lamina propria. This is endocervical mucosa, simple columnar epithelium, thick lamina propria. This is cervical glands, mucus secreting in glands. This is another section shows. This is exocervical mucosa with stratified sequimous epithelium, non keratinized. This is slice section in the vagina. We can see the vagina, the wall of the vagina lacks glands and consists of a mucosa. This is a mucosa, epithelium, lamina propria. This is a mucosa, stratified sequimous epithelium, non keratinized. This is lamina propria. We can see the epithelium is non keratinized, stratified sequimous epithelium, and the epithelial cells synthesize and accumulate glycogen. The lamina propria of the mucosa is rich in elastic fibers with the numerous neuro papillae, numerous neuro papillae projecting into the overlying epithelium. The mucosa normally contains lymphocytes and neutrophils in large quantities. Epithelium lamina propria. The muscular layer of the vagina is composed mainly of two indistinct layers of a smooth muscle disposed as circular bundles next to the mucosa and longitudinal or thicker longitudinal bundles near the adventitial layer muscularis two indistinct layers 
circular near the mucosa and a thick longitudinal near the adventitia. Mammary glands. We will examine the three phases of the mammary gland, resting phase during the pregnancy and during lactation. The mammary glands of the breast consist of 15 to 25 loops of the compound tubulo alveolar type. Each loop is separated from one another by dense connective tissue with much adipose tissue. So each mammary gland consists of 15 to 25 loops separated by connective tissue. This is section in the mammary gland during resting stage or resting phase. Each loop consists of lobules. This is lobule. These are another lobules separated by connective tissue stroma with adipose tissue. This is adipose tissue. Resting stage or resting phase in non-pregnant adult women, each mammary gland loop consists of many lobules. We can see many lobules. Each lobule has several small ducts and rudimentary or not well developed secretory alveoli. Each loop consists of many lobules and each lobule has a small duct and a small rudimentary or not well developed alveoli. This is lobule. The lining epithelium of the duct is simple cuboidal epithelium. This is resting face. We can see lobules separated by connective tissue citroma. Lobule, another lobule with very small and rudimentary alveoli. This is resting phase or resting stage. During a pregnancy, the mammary gland undergo growth during a pregnancy as a result of action of several hormones, mainly estrogen, progesterone, and prolactin. The alveoli, these are lobules, these are alveoli, this is intralobular duct, intralobular duct, alveoli, we can see the, each alveolus is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. So, under the influence of several hormones, cause cell proliferation in secretory alveoli. At the end of the intralobular ducts, the spherical alveoli are composed of cuboidal epithelium. Late in pregnancy, the glandular alveolar alveoli, the glandular alveoli and intraalveolar ducts are dilated by an accumulation of cholesterol. You can see an acidophilic material found within the lumen of the intraalveolar duct and alveoli. This is called cholesterol. Acidophilic material of the cholesterol. 
late in a pregnancy, the glandular alveoli on that are dilated by an accumulation of cholesterol. During the pregnancy and lactation, we can see this trauma becomes less prominent. Mammary uh, glands, uh, lobules, each lobule consists of alveoli and intraalveolar ducts. At higher magnification, we can see the alveoli, these are alveoli, each are spherical in shape, lined with simple cuboidal epithelium, and the lumen is filled with cholesterol. This is mammary gland during the pregnancy. This is intralobular duct, excretory duct with cholesterol. Alveoli also filled with cholesterol. During lactation, we can see the alveoli and the intralobular duct also filled with milk. The cells, the simple cuboidal cells, that also proliferate to become columnar and the cells also filled with fat droplets. This is mammary gland during lactation. You can see the alveoli are filled with milk. And these vacuoles are due to the presence of fat droplets. Vacuoles are due to the presence of fat droplets with the milk. These are alveoli filled with milk. This is intraalveolar duct. This is another section in the mammary gland during lactation. We can see the alveoli are filled with milk. The milk appears acidophilic in color with vacuoles due to the presence of fatty droplets.